security continues to be a real challenge for all organisations. Uh, this, unfortunately, is something that's not going away. Um, it's persistent, it's challenging, um, and it's ever-evolving. And, and this is probably one of the biggest areas that businesses um, face from a risk perspective in relation to their cyber security. We can implement technologies, we can implement controls, firewalls, anti-spam solutions, um, but what we need to really focus on as your first and last layer of defense is your people. Because ultimately, what the attackers are trying to do is get an individual to perform a task. And we see this through the likes of email phishing, SMS phishing, voice phishing. So we get all those scam calls, we get those scam SMSs, and we see the emails that come in. Now, at times, times gone past, we can probably see and detect a lot of those emails. Um, but as technology is adapted, as introduction of AI, as the attackers have got more sophisticated, so have these emails in particular. And some of the email phishing that is out there now is, let's face it, really challenging to identify and to detect. Um, it's getting past systems, it's getting past email filters, it's getting past advanced um, spam protection tools and it's designed that way specifically. So as new technology comes out to protect it, the attackers are obviously continuing to modify their attack vectors and the way they approach these things to bypass it. As fast as we can implement technology, the, the hackers can implement ways around it. So this is where it becomes really important for your staff to be educated and be very, very aware around cybersecurity. So we do talk a lot about phishing, email, SMS, um, but what we need to consider when we're talking to our staff within our organisation is the broader cyber security discussion. Because the way these emails are crafted, it becomes very difficult to detect from a technology perspective. So we need people to be aware of what they're doing in such a fast paced environment, we know we get hundreds of emails a day, uh, particularly in accounts teams and finance teams. We've got invoices coming in, we've got purchase orders coming in, we've got invoices going out, we've got emails going everywhere. Um, and it becomes really challenging at times to detect those emails as they come in. But what we're seeing is a real growth in that overall social engineering as well. So yes, the email is still the the, the tip and where a lot of things start to happen. But we're now seeing things like LinkedIn being used to profile organizations and individuals in the organizations. This then allows the attackers to craft very specific messages that will be targeted to someone. So classic example is what we call the Apple iTunes scam, in that someone new starts at the organization as we all do, we would post that on LinkedIn. Hey, I'm super excited to be starting my new job with ABC company. So the attackers will see that. It's not hard to see, it's all generally very public. Uh, they may or may not have already profiled that organization, so it's pretty easy to find out who the CEO is, who the CFO is, who heads up accounts, those type of things. So what then happens, and inevitably within a couple of weeks of this person starting an organization, they receive an email from the CEO, supposedly. Hey John, can you do me a really big favor? Can you run down the road and grab a thousand dollars worth of iTunes vouchers because I need to surprise or I want to surprise the, um, the team? John's new, he's, he's looking at, he's going, the CEO's contacted me, this is fantastic. He wants me to do something, I'm engaged. What does he do? Runs straight out of the door, goes down to the Apple store, wherever it is, and buys a thousand dollars worth of vouchers. Hey boss, I've got the vouchers, replies in the email. Or the WhatsApp message that's starting to go around now. Oh yeah, great, can you just scrub off the uh, the, the barcode and, and send me the details? Yep, no worries. Scrubs it off, takes photos, done. Thousand dollars in vouchers, gone. Goes to CEO, sees him in the hallway and goes, hey, did you get those, those vouchers? CEO looks at him blankly. Mate, didn't ask you for any vouchers, don't know what you're talking about. Uh-oh, that's it. That's the scenario and that's, that's quite a simple email scam to pull off. 
but what it requires and what it works on is a lot of psychology. I'm the new guy, the CEO's asking me to do something, I don't want to let him down, I don't want to look like an idiot by going and asking him and those sort of things, so I'm just gonna go do it. This, this is what we need to be training your staff on, that and a number of other examples. So that's just one that's going around, but these are the type of engineered um, approaches that, that are happening to organisations and individuals every single day. We've seen companies get profiled where they have a list of staff and they've got their work email addresses and now they've even gone to find their personal email addresses. They might be profiling on Facebook, Twitter, X, Instagram, wherever it is, how much information are you as an individual publishing as well? Because that not only affects you personally, but obviously the business side of things as well. So it's really important to know what you're putting up on social media, what you're publishing on your profiles, how visible are your profiles. Think about um, even to the point of when you answer phone calls and what, what are you talking to people about in those so-called uh, nu nu uh, nuisance phone calls where I don't know you might be getting asked information or they pretend to be from the bank or they might be pretend from Microsoft so there's all these sorts of things we're seeing AI come in to evolve into these scenarios where there's potential to record your voice um, and look to mimic voices so AI is pretty good at that now where it could take my voice off this video off this podcast and probably create a AI avatar that sounds just like me, probably even looks like me as well. So um, you've got to be pretty, pretty switched on to know what you're looking at. Once you know what you're looking at, you can verify if it's legitimate or not. Is this being streamed from a known source? Did I ask for this information? Am I expecting this information? Uh, so that is where cyber awareness really comes into it. And and the big push around it is social engineering. And that's, that's the top level. Social engineering and how these attackers and, and criminals are profiling organizations, profiling individuals, using information that's stored, that's been found on the dark web through either data breaches or phishing attempts and all sorts of stuff. So all this information starts to build a very, very close picture of an organization, an individual, an individual working in an organization, or just an individual by themselves. So this, this risk isn't just at work. This risk goes across all of your um, digital, digital identity. Uh, so it's really important that you're not just looking at how you do these things at work, um, you might get that quiz and you need to answer those questions. It can be really dull and boring at times, but there is some valuable information in there. But think about how you can take that back to your personal life and what are you doing at home with your personal email, with your banking information? How are you securing access to these systems? Have you put the MFA on your personal email address? Have you enabled MFA on your Facebook account, on your Instagram account, on your TikTok account? Have you spoken to your kids about this stuff as well? Um, because whilst they are digital natives, there is a massive gap in that sort of in that generation around securing themselves. They might be very wary about what they're posting and those sort of things and knowing that's going to be available, but are they really focused on the security of their accounts? Because with so much more information, so much more content being published by the younger generation, um, they're, not, they're not necessarily securing it in the same way. Once it's out there, they're probably comfortable to have their TikToks out there and their Instagrams out there, and that's fine. But what if someone takes that control of that account? What if someone starts to impersonate them? What if they're building a profile, not for today, but for five years, for 10 years time, because that's the reality that we're living in. And that's the scary part about it. So this is not about not doing anything online because that's just not going to happen. But what you need to be thinking about when, you, when you're going through these awareness um, trainings that, you're, that your organisation is putting you through is really about not only how do I take this and do what I'm supposed to do in the office, but how do I take this and start to secure what I do at home? 
How do I talk to my, my family, my wife, my kids, my grandparents about securing their systems? I don't know how many times I see a family member get compromised on Facebook and then suddenly messages going around everywhere, don't accept that friend request, my account's been compromised, my account's been hacked. A simple multi-factor authentication on that would probably have solved the problem in the first place. And now you've got to go through the effort of, of uncovering. So that in its, on itself might not seem like a, a real hassle. Ah, it's only Facebook and it, it got compromised. But that compromise now is potentially giving them access to additional information about you to, to continue to build out a profile. Where the ultimate risk is identity theft and identity fraud. So it's not something to be taken lightly and it's got to be you've got to be doing these things not only at work but at home and I think that's the really critical point so when you're doing these things at work and, and going through and you will you're gonna have the questions that come out you are gonna have to watch the videos you're gonna do those things but there are definitely ways and, and we do this with with clients all the time is make it interactive make it fun make it immersive um, gamify it because when people are playing games they tend to learn and they tend to remember um, and that's a key aspect when we talk about cyber awareness training. And what we do is, is very focused on that gamified piece. Um, but ultimately the result is about, and the outcome we're looking to achieve for the individual is both how as an individual do they take steps and take precautions to protect the organisation they work for. But more importantly is take that information that you've learned and look at how you can apply that to your personal life. because. Ultimately, that's what you need to be protecting is your individual personal information is why we do cyber awareness training.